So hey everybody, I just drove seven hours to buy a telescope at Walmart. And I turn around and lo and behold, it's Deep Space Astro. Hey, what's going on, Doug? <laughs> Rich Good to see you, man. Deep Space Astro. So it must be something like the, uh, the the moon and the stars and the sun are in alignment or something. I don't know. But... Hopefully the clouds get out of our way from one day, right? Yeah. Hey, hey everybody, so I just had like the greatest time hanging out with Rich from Deep Space Astro and I just wanted to extend a huge thanks to him and his family for welcoming me into their home and getting the chance to just hang out and talk. We had intended to get the cameras out and do some recording when we were together, but to be honest, we just ended up hanging and talking and the cameras never came out and we just had a really good time together. So Rich is such a gracious host and, and I really am grateful that he, uh, that he welcomed me over to his home and I got to see the inner sanctum of Deep Space Astro's office and hey, check it out. I've got the picture of the aliens just to prove I was really there. <laughs> and so anyway, just a great big huge thanks out to Rich and uh, that was a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. It was a good time. The deal was I, I drove out to see Rich and in the process I had found a new telescope that I wanted to buy which was about two and a half hours from where Rich lives and I worked out a deal with the guy and he came to where I was because I drove seven and a half hours to get out to see Rich. And this was part of my eclipse travel. And uh, so I went to Rich's the first day and then I came back towards home the second day and hooked up with another group of friends where we had basically a, a solar eclipse party and, and had telescopes, had about 20 people over. But anyway, while I was out in Rich's neighborhood, I uh, met up with a guy there at Walmart and uh, I purchased a new telescope from him, which I'll show you here in just a few minutes. So anyway, it was a really great trip and uh, I'm going through, I had like 6,000 images. So it was nearly 96 gigabytes of data when I was done. I've been spending the last couple days just transferring data and going through and went through a process um, in AutoStacker for uh, analyzing and doing quality grading on the images. And then I went over to Cyril and I did a conversion there so I could bring those up in the conversion list. And then I was able to find the individual images by their index number and cross-reference that back over to AutoStacker, which was telling me what number were the highest quality. And I went through and chose those found different ones in different stages of the eclipse. And so I've just been putting together a, a whole bunch. I've, I've got uh, probably, well, I, I just went through all of the images and through all the phases and I picked out maybe 20 to 30 from each phase of the eclipse stages. I had eight different groupings and from those, uh, you know, I had probably 240 images that were analyzed and with uh, with high quality that I pulled down and I started sorting through those to, to get the images that I that I have now and I've been posting some of those up and doing some composite work anyway it's it's a ton of work and but it's going okay I'm trying to do a little bit on that every day so anyway today I am going to be uh, looking at the new telescope and I'm going to start setting some stuff up probably going to have more than one video and uh, today is going to be mainly around the Astro Oasis electronic filter wheel because I need to get this set up because this is going to be going on the new scope and this is the 7 by 2 inch filter wheel uh, provided to me by Astro Oasis. I have a video on that that I will put up here and you can see the introductory video on uh, the filter wheel and the unboxing and stuff like that. So. Anyway, I will get some things set up here and then let me show off the scope. So just give me just a second. All right, so as you can see here, I have picked up a Celestron Edge HD 8 inch and um, I'm just so happy right now. So um, obviously I have 
had aperture fever and succumbed to it. So, uh, but this is fantastic. It is in perfect condition. I did buy this used and you know, it's just absolutely beautiful. And I need to spend some time here today uh, getting some things set up. Nice dust cover telescope came with the top rail, Celestron rail on the bottom, which I double checked and it does fit in my Skywatcher mount. It came with a few accessories. So let me kind of put this right here. I'm kind of paranoid about rolling over, but it is pretty solid. So I got to build the image train and the back focus, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. And actually, I'll probably do like a, a back focus video, but I've got what's the T adapter here that I'm going to need. And I also, the Celestron OAG that I'm really excited about. And uh, this has a much bit bigger prism in it than uh, the other uh, ZWO OAG that I have. And this also has a helical focuser, uh, which will be really handy. It's something I kind of wanted. It's not a necessity because once it's, it's kind of locked into focus without a helical and tightened up, I don't have to mess with it too often. But anyway, I'll be very pleased to have that. Uh, this is also cool because it gives some additional rotation options. Um, where you can rotate independent of the rest of the image train, which is cool. I do have the Stella Lyra rotator. I may see if I can work that into the chain because I do like that rotator because it has the increments on it for degrees. But I'm also happy that this OAG came with a, uh, a nice supply of different spacers. And uh, although I think these are for inch and a quarter here, so we'll see. Uh, anyway, what I need, everything I need may already be on it. So anyway, the OAG, and then we'll have the electronic filter wheel, which I want to get set up today, along with a, uh, a kit of LRGB. I don't have the SHO yet, but what I think I'm going to do for now is so that I can switch between my uh, 533 MC Pro and the mono camera, which I'm going to show you in just a second, uh, is I may put the the dual narrow band filter in here. I have two luminous filters now because this came with the kit, but so I may put the HL or the yeah the 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 HAO3 filter in there, and then I'll have the luminance and the and the dual narrow band for the 533 if I want to swap the camera out. And then I haven't opened the box yet, but I have a, I'll keep it a surprise, but I have the, uh, a new mono camera that just arrived the other day. And uh, I'm gonna crack this bad boy open and, and get it incorporated into the image train on this. And uh, my mono astrophotography journey will begin with that. I also, uh, got the flexible dew shield, the Celestron dew shield with this, so I'll, I'll be using that. And uh, not shown here, but I also have the uh, a counterweight for underneath the bottom rail, uh, which I'm hoping will help offset the weight. This is definitely, the mirror side is heavy on this, and so adding even more weight back here, I can see that that's going to be something that I have to contend with as far as trying to get this balanced. So we'll see how that goes and what that ends up being. Anyway, I'm going to clean all this up and start working on putting filters in the filter wheel and getting that ready. So I'll be right back. All right, so I have been online and read the instructions a couple times on this. Uh, I have not used an electronic filter wheel before but um, it seems pretty straightforward. But if I make any mistakes, then it'll just be part of my learning process here. They did provide some tools. I think I'll go ahead and try to use those. Um, I don't think I need any of these screws right yet. And any of the other accessories or spacer rings or anything, I'll, I'll, I'll use those when I get to the installation part on the MS train. So they provided a little Allen key 
and a little screwdriver. And I'll use this because it is the right size for those, but if it doesn't work out right, then I'll go get a real screwdriver. But that one should be okay. And I'm going to put on some gloves. I'll lay out my filters here. So these are all still sealed. And I'll keep them so with the box so it's easier to see which filter is which. And I've left them sealed because I just didn't want to have to clean them. I am going to have to clean my my HA03 dual narrow band uh, that I had mentioned that I'm going to put in here so that I can use it with uh, my OSC camera when I want to. One of these days I might get uh, an SHO kit. I think I need to get my cleaning kit. Be right back. I broke my zipper on my cleaning kit so I'm using a rubber band to uh, hold it closed. But I'm going to go ahead and get this dual narrow band cleaned up. I have it in the uh, filter holder right now and it is dirty. I'm hoping that once these are all in the filter wheel that they stay relatively clean, um, not having to handle them and switch filters. That was actually the majority of it. All right, that looks pretty good. We'll put that back in here for right now. Let's see, I'm probably going to need that. All right, so I have already cleaned this whole surface. A little bit of dust from what I was just doing there, I think, but other than that, I think it's okay. So. so I'm gonna go ahead and remove these screws around the outside of the case. So I can pull the two sections apart. Okay. One thing I wasn't clear on is if I needed to remove the center Allen bolt, and it appears that I do. This is part of my learning curve here. I just couldn't quite tell from the from the manual. So maybe that's some feedback I will give to Astro Oasis on the documentation side. So to be a little bit more clear on the uh, disassembly and installation of the filters. But then obviously that comes apart. And we'll leave this facing down. Okay, this is cool. So the each filter slot has a number in here. And when I start installing these, I'm going to need to make a note as to what I am putting where. All right, that does not. So this only rotates in one direction. There has a little mechanical stop right here, which basically uh, indexes and centers this so it's perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and install a filter. Uh, one thing I did notice, if you don't fill this up, they uh, recommend 
you don't want to put them all on one side because that can cause it to be out of balance. So you want to space these out. So I'm going to get a piece of paper and a pencil. And this way I can take note of what filter goes into which position. And I think I'm just going to go LRGB and then the HAO3 in the fifth position, and I'll have two open for now. All right, so let's go with the luminance first, and I'll put it in number one. And this is nice. So these are two inch filters that are mounted. Um, I had watched some videos on installing unmounted filter filters and the uh, feedback that uh, I saw on those uh, videos was that it's a huge pain in the ass. So I am uh, not going to go through that. And I just went with two inch mounted and I went with two inch because I have already been doing two inch and I, I didn't want to necessarily limit myself. I, you know, I, I kind of hope to one day have like a full frame camera. So uh, anyway, I won't have to redo or repurchase filters. All right, so luminance is in one. And then I'm going to go RGB. So let's see. So I'm going to have five. Where do I want to skip? All right. So R. Maybe I'll just lay these out. And green. All right, and blue. So this is not where I'm going to put them. And then let's go ahead and get the get the HAO3 filter here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the of this. Uh, drawer and we'll set it in here. Okay, now I'm going to figure out the spacing. So no real good way, I don't think. We can go maybe something, we're going to have double go two and three, I think. So luminance red is in two, green is in three, and then I've got blue in five. And I've got the HAO3. And six. And then I'm gonna verify that. Yep, red. And 
of course, I just added a smudge on that. Let's get that now. Even with gloves on. All right, red is in two, and then double check, green is in three. skipping to try to help keep the wheel balanced, which will help keep from having any excessive wear on the bearing or anything like that as a result. And then the HA03 filter, all right, and number six. Check this again. All right, just making sure they're snug in there. And that's pretty much it. Now I just need to put this back. I'm gonna do a quick Although I don't see any dust, I think I'll just be extra careful. Once I close this up, I'm hoping not to have to open it up again for a while. And I think that looks really good. Dust this. to an empty spot. This was not very tight at all, so I'm just gonna I don't know if it's necessary to go cross pattern. It's just a habit I have to make sure that uh, things seat evenly. I'm not tightening these yet either. I'm just snugging them. So at this time, I think I'm gonna put that in a bag and I know if, if you've watched any of my other videos, uh, I have a thing about holding on to nice bags. But until I get the this connected into the image train, that's the uh, filter opening is exposed. And I just want to try and minimize the risk of any dust getting in there. So I'll just do that. All 
All right, and I will come back to that. And install it when I do the rest of the image train. So anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video here and and prepare for the next one, which I'm going to start setting up the Edge HD. Very exciting. I am uh, anxious to get it going and I'm actually hoping to do it tonight. So I may have more than one video that I'm doing today uh, that I'll uh, release a couple days apart or something like that. Uh, we'll see how it goes. It just depends on time and progress and uh, and all of that. So anyway, I'm going to finish cleaning up here. So thanks so much for stopping by and I hope you like this video. If you uh, want more information about the Astro Oasis electronic focuser, I've got information down in the description. Certainly if you have any questions about it, uh, I am learning as I go here and I'm going to be experimenting and setting up and, and uh, uh, create a profile in Nina and then using it, then I'm going to be sharing my experience on that. So I'll have another video on the setup and, and, and actually using the filter wheel. And I'm looking forward to hopefully having like filter offsets and, and reduce the amount of, uh, of autofocus time that I have in my session. So um, I think that this uh, filter wheel is going to make that possible for me. And anyway, so my name is Doug. This is Astro EF. Thank you so much for stopping by. Again, thanks to Rich for having me out at his place for the Eclipse trip, and uh, it was just a real pleasure to, uh, to meet him and get to hang out. So anyway, everybody take care. I'll talk to you later.